My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. I was almost said SAT. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE, not the SAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we have been solving are the ones that you will find on page number 220 and today is our lesson number 87. I'm going to do, the problems that I'm going to do today are not in the book. These are, believe it or not, bonus percentage problem. Something that you always wanted but were afraid to ask. Percentage bonus GRE problems. Here we go, the first one. What percent of 50 is 8? And again, as I explained to you before in the beginning of the series here, starting from day number 84, these, these percentage videos that I'm making here are, for, are meant for people who are, who are a little rusty on the percentage. If you're if you, if you, if you okay, uh, the word I was going to use was conversant. If you're conversant, what does it mean to be conversant at something? It just means to be good at something, to be skilled at something, to be conversant. Let's see if I can actually find this thing, if I actually covered it. Conversant. I am not sure, as you might uh, take a... I'm looking at my list here, I can't find it. But like I said, oh there you go, oh what do you know? What the... Day 3. Just type in vocabulary. Day 3, my name. Just type in Keshwani. Vocabulary, day three, and you will learn this word conversant. If you're, if you're good at it, if you're skilled at it, if you're conversant at it, and uh, you have no trouble with the percentage problems, then these are, then, then you, these are not meant for you. I'm talking about people who have some trouble with it. So, here's what we do. We use our dictionary here. What means X? Wherever we see X, that's our unknown. We replace what with our unknown X. Percent means, percent means over 100, out of 100. What percent? Of means, of means, multiply, times, 50, is means, is means, equals. That's it, we are done. That's all it is. All you have to do is now solve for, solve for x. So we're going to do that. Divide the top and bottom by 50, so this becomes 2. Now multiply both sides by 2. And we are done. That's it. So our x here on this side equals 16. Let's see if it actually makes sense. Let's see if it actually makes sense. What we're claiming here is that, you see here this what part, we replace this part with what we just found. This, this is the what part. We were solving for what? The answer is 16. So what we're claiming is that 16, what we're claiming is that 16% of 50 is 8. Does it make any sense to you? Is 16% of 50 8? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's find out, shall we? We are we're looking for we are looking for a cogent explanation, an intuitive explanation, uh, so that we can convince somebody that that, in, that indeed is the case. Another word that I just used was cogent. Cogent means to be persuasive, to be convincing. Cogent. Let's see if we if I can find the day for that one. I know I covered it. Oh, day number seven. Again, one more time. Cogent means to be persuasive, to be convincing. And then as an adjective and a noun for that is, if one is cogent, one is said to have, if one is cogent, one is said to have cogency. Learn the words. So let's, ex let's see if we can actually explain in a cogent manner why 16 is in fact the right answer. We know, we know that 16%, we know that 16% of 100 is 16. That we do know. 16% of 100 is 16. Nobody is going to argue with that. Therefore, therefore, if you were to take half of this amount, 16% of 50, 
what 16 is ah therefore if you were to take the half of this amount in other words if you were to divide this quantity by half 16 percent of 100 whatever that quantity is 16 percent of 100 if you were to divide this side of the equation by 2 we have to divide this side of the equation by 2 so this side when you divide this side of the equation by 2 let me erase this part so I, I have the room listen, listen very carefully when we divide this side of the equation by 2, there are two ways you can express this thing. You can either say 16 divided by 2, which is 8. You can say 16 divided by 2, which is 8. You can say 8% 8 of 100 is 8. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8% 8 of 100 is 8. Or, or, you can say, see, this part, this thing that you see here, can be expressed in two different ways. You can say 16 over 2% of 100 or we can say or we can instead of instead of giving 2 to 16 we can give the 2 to 100 we can say 16 percent of 100 over 2 is 8 so if you were to divide if you were to take this to if you were to take half of this thing if you were to take half of this thing then it will say that 16 percent of 100 divided by 2, which is 50, is 8, which is what we just found. Perhaps I'm explaining too much. Maybe it's too simple. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Give me one second. Next one is not that straightforward. It is for the problems like the one that I'm about to do, that we did all this work. In case you're wondering, why the hell do I have to do this thing? If I have a calculator, well, the problems that you're going to see on the GRE are not the kind of problem that lend easily to just simply finding out what is 40% of 200. They're not going to ask you a silly question like that. You can't just go 0.4 times 200 in the calculator and figure it out. It's going to be something of the nature that I'm going to give you on the blackboard just now. And for that, you really do have to know how to set up the equation. Calculator is not going to tell you how to set it up. But these two charts, on the other hand, will tell you how to set it up. So here's the first question. After I put the question on the blackboard, I want you to pause the video. I want you to solve it yourself. You'll get a lot, lot, lot more out of it. And once you have the answer, then resume the video. Here's the question. The question is, 60% of 30% of what is... 81. Voila, that's the question. I'm going to read one more time to you. The question is, the question is, 60% of 30% of what is 81? Okay, as I said, pause the video, solve it yourself. Once you have the answer, you can resume the video. blacking the blackboard. So here we go, 60% of 30% of what is 81. All we're going to do is translate this sentence from English to so mathematics using this dictionary right here. This dictionary consists of only four words. That's it. Percent of what and is. Here we go. 60 percent means over 100. Of means times 30 Percent means over 100. Of means times. What we replace what with x. This is your what. Is means equal. 81. There you go. Voila. We have our equation. That is the most important part. Having the right equation. If you have the right equation, the rest is downhill. If you have the right equation, the rest is downhill. So let's solve for x. I'm not going to explain to you every excruciating uh, details and steps uh, for, for one reason, I, I don't have the room on the blackboard. So we're going to multiply both sides by one, by, multiply this side by 100, that will take out this 100, multiply again this side, both sides by 100, took out this 100. And the, and the, actually I can do that if you like. So it is 60 over 100 times 30 over 100 times x equals 81. So I'm going to do it for you just in case. Multiply this side of the equation by 100 and multiply this side of the equation by 100. 
that will take out this 100 and this 100. Multiply again both sides of the equation by 100. And that will take out this 100 and that 100. Now divide both sides of the equation. Now divide both sides of the equation by 60 times 30. And that will take out this 30 and this 60 will go out. At the very end, this is what you should have. 81 times 100 times 100 over 60 times 30. Notice how I'm not trying. Notice how I do. How I do not have any urge to start simplifying things right now or figuring things out. Leave everything to the end. Everything to the end and do it in one shot. So here we go. Okay, watch. Everything gonna go. Divide top and bottom by 10. That takes out this zero. Divide top and bottom by 10 again. This takes out this zero. So this 100 is gone. I see 81 here. Let's divide top by 3. If you divide top by 3, how many 3's in an 8? 8 has 2 3's. The remaining 2 goes and joins this guy, becomes 21. How many 3's in a 21? 7 of them. In other words, 27 times 3 is 81. So that takes care of that 3. Let's go one more round with the 3. So if you divide 6 by 3, it becomes 2. And if you divide 27 by 3, uh, that becomes 9. I see a 100 here, and I see a 2 here. I see a 100 here, and I see a 2 here. Let's take care of that, and you get 50. So at the very end, it's, a, it's very messy, but you have to keep track of your work. At the very end, what we're left with is 9 times 50. That's it. X equals 9 times 50. That's it. X equals 9 times 50. I'm going to do it one more time on the top, because this is too crowded. I'm, going to, I'm not going to show any baby steps. I'm just going to do it on the top. We already have the question. 60% of 30% of what is 81. We already have the question. I'm going to redo it. And we're going to go directly from here to here without showing any baby steps. So here we go. X equals 80. In other words, bring this 100 over there. Bring this 100 over, over there on the top. When you move it to the other side, the denominator becomes numerator and numerator becomes denominator. You know that. And 60 times 30. 60 times 30. Here we go. I left no room up, up, up there for me to show, so, show the thing. So, cross out the two zeros right away. That 100 is gone. Let's divide top and bottom by... Can this thing go into 6? No, it won't go into 6. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 8. How many 3's in an 8? There are two 3's in an 8. The remaining 2 goes and becomes, joins this guy, becomes 21. How many 3's in a 21? There are 7 of them. That takes care of that 3. Let's go one more round. Divide by 3 and divide 27 by 3, it becomes 9. Now I see a 2 and I see a 100. So we're left with 50 times 9. 50 times 9 is our answer. How much is 50 times 9? 50 times 9 is 450. I should not have raised the question because I just realized that now we have to verify our answer. And, and for verification I need, to I, I need the question. I need the problem again. Okay. Let's erase this thing. I'm going to erase all of this thing. This right there. Let's, let's get rid of all of this thing. Our answer is 450. We're going to verify it now. 60% of 30% of what is 81? The question was 60% of 30% of what is 81? So what we're going to do now, we are claiming, we are claiming that the unknown, this part what here, this part right here, we are claiming that this is 450. So we're going to replace it. We're going to put 450 in here and it is now no longer a question, it's no longer a question mark, it's a statement now. It's a statement. What, what we're stating is, what we're claiming is, 60% of 30% of 450 is 81. And we have to verify it. We have to show it in a cogent manner, in a convincing manner that that in fact is the case. So let's first, let's first find out this part. 30% of 450. 30% of 450. I don't know what 30% of 450 is. But I know that 10%, 30% of 450, I don't know what 30% of 450 is really, I do not know what 30% of 450 is, but I know that 10% of 450 is 45. 
Therefore, therefore, 30% must be three times as much. In other words, if I were to multiply this side by three, it will be three times as much. Very good, that's your 30%. How much is 45 times three? If you were to come up to me and ask me how much is 45 times three, my answer would be, how the hell do I know? Well, there are two ways we can go about figuring it out. I know 40 times three, I know 40 times three is 120. And I know three fives are 15. So 120 and a 15, makes 135. So I broke up the four, I broke the four, 45 into 40 and a 5. Instead of trying to figure out 45 times 3, I took the 45 and I broke it into 40 and a 5. And figured out the third, 3 times that amount, 3 times that amount. That's one way of doing it. Another way to do this thing is, pretend this 40 is actually 50. I know 3 50s are 150. This is not 50, this is 45, this is 5 less. So you subtract 3 fives from 50 and you get the same answer, 135. So that's this part. First part is done. Let's look at second part. And then, and then we're claiming that if you were to take this amount, we just figured out 135, this amount right here that you see here, this right here, this amount here is this part, 135. And then we're claiming that 60% of that amount is 81. Let's find out. 60% of 135 is what we have to figure out. And this is where this table comes in handy. As I explained to you the first day when we started the percentage problem on, page, on day number 84, you should know your fifths. You should know your 20%, 30, you should know your 20%, 40%, 60%. You should know your fifths. 60% is 3 fifths. 3 fifths of means times 135. Watch what happens. This is, of course, it's just 135, which is same as 135 over 1. Divide the top and bottom by 5. How many fives in a 13? 13 has two fives. The remaining three goes and joins this guy becomes 35. How many fives in a 35? Seven of them. Three, three times 27, guess what that equals to? Three times 27 equals, believe it or not, equals 81. In other words, we just showed, we just showed that 30% we just showed we showed it we had to do it in two steps we first we showed that 30% of 450 450 was our answer that we are claiming 30% of 450 we found out is 135 and then 60% of that amount this is a 60% of that amount 60% of 135 is 81 so that in there that in this this in, indeed is correct 60% of 30% of 450 is indeed 81 we just showed it that's it we are done for today. That's what I'm going to do. I will see you tomorrow on day number 88 where we're going to do two more problems uh, and hopefully that will help you. And then on, what do I have planned for day number 89? Oh, day, we have to add one more day here. It goes all the way up to day number 89. It goes all the way up to day 89. So instead of putting them individually, it's day 84 to 89. Day I kept adding days, days 84 to 89. Percentage problem, 84 to 89. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow when we'll do some more percentage problems, okay? Bye now.